Hello and welcome to iNerdius. In this video, I want to briefly talk about three novels that I started reading once upon a time and then gave up on and have been wondering if I should pick them back up again and uh, try to finish them. The, the first one is a science fiction novel that I tried reading when it first came out in hardcover and I hit a point where I just couldn't couldn't keep reading it, and it's a it's a novel that I think has garnered uh, critical acclaim, and the author went on to become pretty successful. So maybe that's one I need to try again. And the book I'm talking about is Queen City Jazz by Kathleen Ann Goonan. I actually uh, briefly knew Kathleen uh, back in the late. 80s, I think it was, maybe the early 90s. We met at, I believe, the Nebula Awards Banquet in New Orleans, and she was part of a group of people that the editor, um, Gardner Desois, who was the editor of Asimov's science fiction magazine at the time, uh, he took a bunch of us out to dinner one night, and Kathleen Angunin was among that group. Uh, it was also Gardner, I believe, Susan Schwartz. We walked around for a very long time that night looking for a restaurant that appealed to both Gardner and Susan. But it was an interesting evening, and I found Kathleen to be a very nice person. And so when her novel came out in hardcover, I thought I'd, I'd give it a try. And at some point, I want to say it was in the first quarter of the book, I just hit a passage that I couldn't, couldn't stand. And if I remember correctly, it was something along the lines of describing the personality of certain characters in terms of a color. And so it was like, so-and-so was blue, so-and-so was green, so-and-so. And I just found that really, uh, I don't know, it just rubbed me the wrong way and I gave up on the book. Also, like a lot of cyberpunk, it used a lot of lingo, a lot of um, in-world lingo and terminology that I found um, uh, distracting and made it difficult to get through the book. Um, in fact, a different novel, which I will talk about at a different time, uh, used so much of that lingo that I found the novel to be incomprehensible and decided it was probably the worst work of fiction I'd ever actually read the entire way through. So that will be a different, um, a different video. But I don't know. I mean, I suppose I should um, try again with Queen City Jazz. Um, if I happen across it, maybe I will pick it up, but uh, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments about that. Um, the second book that I gave up on was Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace. And I started reading that um, mainly because that was a title that I had intended to use back in the 80s for something I wanted to write. <laughs> Um, and I was kind of annoyed that he had used to, he had gotten to that title before I did. Um, I actually had as part of a trilogy, it was going to be, if I remember correctly, um, infinite jest that was going to be the infinite jest, the universal throb and the cosmic finger. <laughs> and it was going to be uh, a very, uh, uh, sort of. I don't know, rebellious uh, science fiction story. Um, never did even really develop the idea for those stories, just had the uh, titles. I believe the Universal Throb came from a line from Timothy Leary in his book, The Politics of Ecstasy. Um, and I don't remember where the cosmic finger came from. It might have been just one that I invented myself. So, but I tried reading Infinite Jest and uh, I gave up after about 90 pages. Um, I don't like that kind of writing. Um, I don't mind postmodernist fiction, but I prefer, you know, I like Ulysses. I like Virginia Woolf's, um, some of Virginia Woolf's stuff. Actually, I like most of her stuff. Um, but I just found Infinite Jest to be trying too hard. Um, and I felt like the author was just a little too pleased with himself. Um, and, and being weird and, and pushing boundaries. And I just, it just felt, I use this term before when it comes to writing and I don't know really how to 
define it, but the writing was very precocious. It was just like somebody really pleased with themselves and not really delivering much uh, in the way of a story. I was intrigued by the tennis pro stuff because I know the author had a background in that, and so that was kind of interesting, uh, getting, getting some insight, um, getting to delve into that world a little bit. But the rest of it, I just found annoying. However, a friend of mine uh, here in Atlanta, who I regard as highly intelligent and as having really good taste generally, he's a violinist for the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra here, um, he really liked it. So that gave me pause and made me think maybe I ought, to, I ought to give it another shot. So that's the second one. And then the third one uh, is... The Thorn Birds by Colleen McCullough. And that I read, I started reading because it was uh, recommended. It was one of the books that was talked about in the how to uh, book written by the agent Donald Moss called Writing the Breakout Novel. And I was reading that and I thought, well, maybe I need to read some of the books that are mentioned um, in his, some of the novels that are mentioned in his book. And I read The Thornbirds, and I gave up on that after, I think, the first couple of chapters, maybe. Um, it just didn't do anything for me. I found um, nothing, to, to, nothing to latch on to to make me interested in it. And I don't really know why that is. Um, it might have been that the uh, characters were wholly um, unpleasant and uninteresting and didn't really seem to be doing anything that mattered. Uh, to me in terms of the things I like to read about, I guess. I don't know. Um, it's certainly not anything to do with me not liking mainstream fiction. I actually have read a lot of mainstream fiction and a lot of classics, and I love some of them. I enjoyed The Godfather, uh, so uh, not as much as the movie, but that'll be, another, that'll be another video as well. And I should point out, as with The Infinite Jest, I actually do know somebody who um, apparently read and really liked the Thornbirds. This is the partner for the, um, the guy who cuts my hair, and he said that his partner really liked it a lot. So, and I know his partner, he's a very intelligent person. Um, I don't know him that well, as well as I know my friend, the violinist, but uh, in, any, in every interaction I've had with him, he comes across as highly intelligent and discriminating, and he knows what he likes. And so maybe that's another indication that I should give the Thornbirds another shot. So I don't know. I mean, do I do I bother to um, pick up the Thornbirds again and and uh, try to finish it? Is it worth it? Is is it does it deliver um, something that may be meaningful that I overlooked? Uh, I don't know. What, I don't know. Um, let me know what you guys think. If you think I should give that another shot. Uh, I will, um, I will try to maybe pick up one of these this year and see how it goes. I'm actually leaning towards, um, Infinite Jest because I think that one will be easier to find, um, used at least. So generally speaking, I finish, uh, everything I start when it comes to reading. I am loath to set down a novel or even a nonfiction book without finishing it. It does happen. Um, I have read some crap that has made me rethink that, um, that commitment. And so I'm a little more willing to put a book down now without finishing it. Once I realize that it's not really going anywhere that I want to go. Um, I do have uh, a number of books that I did finish that I kind of regret putting the time into, and I will do another video on that. So there you have it. The, um, three novels that, at least that I can recall, not finishing, that I am curious uh, as to whether or not I should give them another try. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe. And thank you very much.